First, we want to draw the door. Okay. Going to be using willow chalk, vine chalk. Bottom, I want to make sure we've got enough room for a doorstep. So I'm going to hold my hand at the base and kind of put a, a full hand distance at the bottom of my canvas on the right. Side, so I want about equal measurement from the bottom, excuse me, on the right side. So I want about a hand distance on the right. So I'm just going to put a couple of marks here to where I know where I'm putting my door in. I want more space at the top of my canvas. So I'm going to keep the door kind of on the bottom uh, fourth or bottom, you know, quarter or third. Come down at least a full hand distance, not four fingers, at least a full hand distance here. So now we want to go ahead and draw in that rectangle. You can use a ruler if you want, but um, freehanding in there is, is fine also. You do want to try to get it straight. How, don't worry about your lines being too straight. We're doing like a beach kind of cottage doorway. We want to have a little bit of uh, the construction, of course, is older. So if it's an older construction, it's not always straight. We want it to have a little age to it, a little bit of life. So, you know, if you've got some curves, you know, if you mess up a little bit on these lines, you can always paint over it. So it's not a big deal. I want to come down about a finger and a half to two finger distance at the bottom. Put a line at the bottom for our doorstep. Now come out from the bottom right angle. So we want this doorstep to come out towards us. So we're pulling it out at... Uh, put in a 45 degree angle coming out from that door. I'm going to straighten this side on the left. So we're closer to the left side of the door. We can see the angle on the right side. So take this angle up on the door to 45 on this side and then bring down the edge. That would be uh, just the inside of that stoop for that door. So you've got an angle straight down towards your right bottom corner and an angle up towards your right corner. Just want to bring that over at the top. You want these to the top and the bottom of the door that uh, in the kind of seal of the door, you want that to be about the same distance. I am going to put a line down the center. So I'm going to first put white all over the background. You can squirt this out with a tube or you can get your palette knife. doesn't matter which way you put this on here. We just want a good bit on there. If you're working on a easel, you're going to, it's possible you're going to have a mess.
so now I want to start putting in some color at the bottom. So I'm going to be using, uh, i got a lot on my palette right now, but I'm not going to use all of this. So the next step, I would make sure I've got yellow ochre. You could also use raw sienna if you didn't like yellow ochre, if you wanted a different tone. You're going to need a deep brown like raw umber or burnt umber. Uh, and then you can use a little bit of black or dark Prussian blue. So first, with mine, I want to get a little bit of yellow ochre. And I want to come in the bottom. What I'm trying to do now is tone my wall in for some shading, shadow work. So I don't want it too strong. I put a little bit on there. Now I want to use a little bit of brown uh, at the top of, right below this doorstep. So I'm going up with my yellow ochre. And it's mixing with the white, so it's uh, we're getting different, different tone, different tints, because it's mixing with that white, so it's getting um, got some darker and some lighter, and you want to let that happen. Put the side of that door a little bit over on the left side. Palette knife with Prussian blue. Uh, start in the middle of your door. Do the middle line coming down first. That makes life a little easier for the right and left. So then you divide the right and the left side of your door in half and put another line. And that'll give you four boards, three lines, unless you want more. Unless you've got a taller door, wider door, whatever. I want to do a little bit of a shadow with, so this is blue on the left open. side where I want my door handle face. Now is your door handle in the middle of your door? It is on some. It depends on where it is and where you want it to be. It should be a little bit below the halfway of your door, right? Pulling that up. So I'm going to come down here a little bit below halfway and just touch in a little bit of a shadow. Turn your palette knife Way, that's that's fine. Also, that's with you Prussian don't blue mixed over top of whatever much over there. It's not a dark shadow. It's like it's just a little bit really because we're gonna so have a door knob. Up and down a little bit. I've got mine's about an inch and a half. She's gonna do it next week. Uh, uh, okay. Inch and a half palette knife. This metal you can't use plastic. So the, there's there's our door knob that's I'm gold. About to. Uh, but I want to I want to start grass, getting in some just dark yellow tones now before I go too far. So once I put this yellow ochre on this side, I'm going to add some browns. So I'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber, and I want to put that underneath the doorstep. It's beautiful. I like. I'm going to actually pull it down a little, and then come back in and. Push it in. Now, this burnt umber is not my favorite color. I would rather use raw umber here because it's a little bit more muddy. So, if you want to change that, some you can grab a little bit of black. So, if you want more texture in your door, it depends on what year you painted your door. Do you want it more weathered? If you want your door, if you want your door more weathered, clean your palette knife off. And we're gonna say maybe we had our door a different color. 10 years ago, it was pretty weathered. So maybe you want to come back in with some yellow. Not yet. I will come back and do the top of the step. The top of the step is a little bit you more. You can put red, red. That's going to be really bold. Sunlight. I like the, the yellow. So this is down below. So I've touched in a tiny so bit. So I'm of adding in a little bit, bit of, of yellow ochre so at the base. A little bit more. Loading my palette knife shadow straight up and down the right side. I'm going to tap in. I'll tap in first, then I'll smooth it out. So this would be if we've got some peeling paint. Now while well, I've got on that door. color on my palette, I'm going to come to the left and put in a little bit of shading. shading on the left side. Ma'am, you can come back in and add some of this. Using what you feel like you don't is never a bad decision. Use, use that color. Because if it mixes with your blue, it's going to make purple anyway, which is going to work for shading. Always go with the colors you feel. Don't worry about making anybody else happy doing this. That's the only mistake you can make is trying to make somebody else happy. Got a little bit up near that shadow to the center, so just lightly touch that. There's a lot of wet paint up there. If it over blends, you're not going to get the colors. Now, as 
at the base where I put this yellow ochre in, I'm going to add some white now. interchange a palette knife and a brush now, as with during all, this process that way got, um, you can use both dark areas in there so if you want I'm to I'm going to start in, putting like, paint the on the door knife. are we ready like working with that big one you and you want some line work inside the door yes so I'm going to use uh, uh, I'm using sky blue you can do that and emerald green and also some Prussian blue for shadows to dry. If we're going to put with white on some like If you guys are using store, professional paints, I would use we don't want a lot of thalo blue. Uh, that paint you could use wet. thalo blue, thalo green, so and white to make a beautiful door turquoise. Where you want it to be now. Or you could. It just depends on the tone that you want on that door. If you want a turquoise door, you can go straight with turquoise. But it's nice to have two a blue and a green, so you get different tones. Prussian blue or black up in the right corner. So you get sh shading don't and a little it, white in the left corner. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just put it on the, the, the canvas first so you can see. And then I'll wait before we mix it together. So what I'm going to do, this is sky blue. I'm going to put some here. Wipe my palette knife off. Grab some emerald green. Add that. So I'm just putting some in there first. I'm going to grab white. Put it down at the bottom left side of the door. And then I want Prussian blue, or if you don't have Prussian blue, you can use Payne's gray or black for the top right corner where we're going to have more sh shadow. So, see what's on my, my canvas? 
just plop it on there. You can push it right out of the tube on there. You can load it on your palette knife, then pull it down. Don't get thin and stingy with your paint. Feather. Now the pressure of your hand is pretty important with the palette knife. I'm going to pull up and down, kind of work those colors together, go over to the edge. Now we've got some shadow. We want to deal with that shadow. Don't let your paint get too thin. Don't push down with too much pressure. is not for painting. That's for coloring books. Oh, okay. <laughs> so sanding the lines is not something that I recommend because you need to have that process where you go over the lines a little bit. Um, you want this to feel like a painting. And if you go over the lines, you can always add more paint and straighten that up later if that's driving you crazy. But don't worry too much. If you're just now getting used to or just now using a palette knife, you want to experiment a little bit and allow yourself to have what you think are mistakes. In the end, they're not mistakes. It's just part of the process. Staying in the lines is not for it's overrated. That's right. terrible. It's if you stay in the lines, you never <laughs> learn anything and you don't have any fun. I have fun all the time. You need to have fun. You need to have fun with this. So I'm getting some really cool marks up here. If I overwork that palette knife, I'm not. I'm going to lose some of those marks. You have to decide. You want a balance of some of that cool texture you get from your palette knife, but also to where it makes sense that it's a door. I don't want to mess with that too much because I really like what's going on. You want to find a balance. You want this to feel like it's your own painting. You don't want it to look like anybody else's. I'm not sure if anybody would claim this piece here. Down at the bottom, I'm working in white. So I'm at the edge, pulling in first. If you're having problems and you do want to stay kind of in the lines, Go to the edge of your straight edge and pull in with your palette knife or up and then you can smooth it out. You can always touch up that background later if you went over the edge. Yeah, you're going to have plants around the doors. So it's not a big deal. Marcia, do you know what you need? You've already got it? Okay. Okay. That's what you want. So now at this point, if you want to smooth out some of your darks, you can. If you like seeing some of that, that's great. What I want to do now is come in with a couple of um, boards. So I need a board in the middle. I'm just going to put that down so I know where I'm going to be and I want one on the left and right. So I'm going to have a total of four boards. So I'm going to pull that straight down, pull it through. It may go back down to your base white. It could just show through turquoise. It just depends. Just let it be what it's going to be right now. These lines will help you later. We can add in black or Payne's gray or Prussian blue. All right, so we've got four lines coming down. Four lines? 
four lines. Do the one in the middle first. Uh -huh. And then on the right and left side of that middle line, you want to kind of divide that space to where it's fairly even. So I want to get a little bit of Prussian blue. I'm going to load on my palette knife and I want to bring this down at an angle to show a little bit of dark. Make sure it's not too heavy. I want to show a little bit of shadow in that uh, in between the boards. So I'm just pulling that line down. If it doesn't go all the way, it's not a big deal. Don't overthink this. Don't overwork it. Have a little fun with it. So you should have three lines total. One in the middle and one on each side. Three lines total, but four boards. No, it's okay. No, no, no. If you've got more, no, stop. If you've got more and it makes sense to have more, that's fine. So one in the middle and one on each side, dividing it in uh, equal parts. You should have four boards. If you've done more than that, that's fine. You may have a bigger front door. Smaller boards. I mean, it could be made, you know, you, know, you don't know when this was constructed. So... We're not worried about straight boards right now. Okay. <laughs> Remember, you can use your fingers too. You've got some um, impression up on the left hand corner. Right. right corner, yeah. It stretches over, so you've got a shadow that's kind of like cutting the top quarter yeah. at an angle over. So we're thinking the sun's coming from here. You're going to see this area as being darker, so it's going to add shadow to the top side of your door. It's going to be more kind of um, washed in sunlight down below, so this step is going to have more white on it naturally. shadow at the bottom. I'm going to use a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of that Prussian blue with black. And at the bottom here, I just want to touch in a cleaner shadow. Where are you doing that? Bottom uh, doorstep on the, the door seal kind of at an angle. Now if I need some to straighten up my side here, so I've gotten a little bit of a mess right there. I need to come in, clean up my mess, probably hit it with my hand. So I'm just going to touch in a little bit of white if I've gone over the lines a little bit. You can do it with your finger, you can do it with a paintbrush, whatever. And I want to clean up the edge of the door here. And I'm going to use uh, just a flat wash brush or an angle brush. A little bit of Prussian, a little bit of black, and it doesn't have to be super straight, but you do want a little bit of refinement along the edge. If your paint's still wet, that's fine. It's still squishy. It's still squishy. Is that a word? Yeah, squishy is a word. Yes. Yeah, you can stay somewhere. Today. Now I'm going to kind of lightly rub in. If I've got some places that need a little bit extra care, a little bit extra refinement, I can come in now and kind of paint that in. I'll tell you what, using that palette knife gives you a big respect for how much control you do have over. Right, so when you go from a palette knife back to a brush, you're like, wow, yeah, ooh, that's easier. So control, you know, control is a farce. We don't have a lot of control, but we want to have a little bit of control, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you want more control. That may be that you're not in love with the palette knife. But use the palette knife to get everything on there, get some texture on there, then come back in for some refinement. Yeah, I could have gotten that texture. Yeah, that would have, that's kind of tough, tough, that's right. So we're about to start with the bush on the left, or the vine. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 
That's, it's already got texture on it, so it's great. Okay, so first uh, we want to put in the, the vine itself because the vegetation goes on top of the vine. So you want to, and anything that you're painting that back forward is important. So I want to use a little bit of, let's put our brush back down. We want to work with that palette knife some more. Yeah, but be careful. So uh, I'm going to use the small one. You can use the, actually the big one might be, give you better control. That might, might not make sense, but a small palette knife has short, jotty little strokes. Well, this is going to give you something a little bit more fluid. Okay? If you want your vine to look crispy, Yes, if you want sharper bends, maybe a smaller one. But um, you can always practice this first before you apply it. I want to use, a, I'm going to load my paintbrush with burnt sienna, not, excuse me, my palette knife, painting knife, with burnt sienna on the edge, on the left hand side. Now, I'm right-handed. I'm loading my palette knife on the left bottom, and I'm going to hold it at a 45 degree angle and pull it down. So I'm going to start at the top of where I want my vine to be. Less is more, so... I'm sorry, what was that? The left, uh, the left side of my palette knife. And I'll hold it at a 45 degree angle Let's say I want my, my vine here. I don't want to paint with the full surface of it. You can also just load it enough that it's got some that you can just set it down and pull. Now it doesn't have to be, don't worry about it getting, okay, let me try that again. So a little bit more on your palette knife. Pull that vine, maybe you want one that crosses over. Now you can put the paint on like this, apply it, put it on the, the canvas, and then you can smooth it out with a paintbrush if you feel like you need to. All I'm seeing is the back of your head, Kristen. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Let me move. Let me move. Uh, I want some lines for. I could have a bush down below. So I'm putting in some lines down here. A lot of this is going to be covered. So if you make a, 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 a branch or a vine that you're not happy with, well, you have the freedom to put leaves over top of it or flowers. Now with this burnt sienna, you can put some of that color in the door also, if you like that color, just by touching in a little, um, if you feel like you need a little bit more on your door for texture. I can't get it on my paper. I can't get it. I cannot get this. What can you not get? It won't, it won't come off my palette. Where did you say we color? My paint's still so pretty. Color a little bit at the top also. So this vine does not have to stretch the whole way up. We can have areas that kind of peek out. And we can have vegetation here and vegetation here to where you're just seeing um, the idea of the vine there. If you want some that comes over the...
All right, so I'm gonna stop there. I can add more later if I need to. What I'm worried about now is putting in vegetation. So I'm gonna take a little break and let this kind of dry to a little tackiness. Okay, guys, so what I'm gonna do now, Prussian blue and green. So I'm gonna- With a brush? brush. With a brush. <laughs> so from now on, I'm using a brush. I'm done with my palette knife. I'm using a 3 8 angle, but you can use any flat, any round. You could use a filbert, a, a liner, whatever makes you happy. I'm so excited. Good, good, good. So on my palette, I'm moving in a little bit of sap green with uh, Prussian blue. So what I want to do now is I want three tones of green. Dark green, medium green, light green. So what we want to do now, don't get too messy, don't overthink it, just know you're going to have a lot going on. First I want my vine, so I'm going to come in with uh, that green and blue and just push down, pick up. You can have, of course, different uh, different shapes of leaves. This is uh, the dark stuff. This is dark. You want dark to light, so we're doing dark first. So you don't have to cover everything. Try not to push your brush around on top of wet paint or you're going to get a mess. You want to push it down, pick it up. You might have to reload your brush every one, two, or three strokes, depending on how heavy that background color is, or how heavy your, your Clean my brush off, and I'm immediately going to go into my next green tone. So this is going to be straight your medium green. So it's either sap green or olive green or whatever green that you guys wanted to use. So now I'm cleaning my brush off, and I'm going to be coming in there. If you've got like a phthalo uh, green that's got white in it, if you've got like a brighter green, you can use that. Or you can use yellow with your green. You use more yellow, so this is going to have your light green bright spots. So down below, it may be that if your, your paint is so thick, you might want to come in with just straight yellow, and it's going to mix in and make more of a yellow green. Now, I don't want this all over. I want this to feel like this is the highlights. This is where the sun is hitting my bush. So I'm not gonna take it all the way down on the base because you want the top branches on this bush to feel like they're hanging over and those bottom branches are down underneath. So they're more in the shadow. So this yellow should extend at the top of your branches or the top of your bush. So that makes sense of where the light is hitting.
and maybe there's more sunlight on the left side of your plant and left, less on the right side. Just depends on where your light source is. Now I want to do that with the vine up top, not as much. I want to make sure these feel like um, whether it's one solid plant or two plants, if I want them to match, those are kind of decisions you need to make. So we're going on the outside, coming into those branches, lighting them up from the outside in. Don't do it all over. Remember, this is highlights. This is where the light's hitting. Turn your brush, maybe get some spots, maybe get some pushed in little leaf. Um, angle so you want to change your leaves as you go don't make them all feel like they're the same pattern that way you're getting different angles of the leaf a little bit more yellow over the door where it stretches over the door This is a good study for your sketchbook. You can refine it if you want and do it more if you like if you like the style, but it's a good quick study to get a painting finished in a couple of hours uh, just to keep your technique up. Now, if you use white, you're going to get more of a pastel tone. So it's going to change your greens into pastels, kind of like Easter egg tones. If you want to stay more vibrant, you use yellow. If you want to soften that green more, you need to add white. Next decision, last decision you need to make. Is there any details I need to do? And is there any flowers I want to add to my vine? So if I want to add... Um, some flowers, you can use any color for your flowers. I'm going to use a, a quinacridone violet with white. Uh, if you're doing this at home and you don't have quinacridone, you can use red or a burgundy and add white. So I'm just going to come in with some flowers. I don't want to overdo it. It's important that we don't overdo our painting, especially our flowers. Less is more. If you have too many, it's going to take away from the painting. So just pick a few. I'm going to go with an odd number. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think eleven is a good number. Or maybe thirteen. So don't evenly space these out. You need some to be closer to others. If they're, if, if it's methodical where you put them, if it feels too much like a pattern, it's not going to feel natural. So at first I put in that red or burgundy or whichever color you want to use. And then you can come in with a little bit of white and push over top to get, now you have an immediate three layers of color because you've got the dark red in there first. Then you push in white. You don't push too hard. You'll get a medium tone. You can always come back with another spot if it pushes too hard um, in there. But I want to do this before it dries. Just getting the idea of flowers. Doesn't have to be perfect. So this kind of painting you can keep going. You can go on and on and on. Uh, just knowing when to say when is important. You want to have a little bit of roughness. If your vines, if you don't feel like your vines are connected or they feel right, you can come back in. But remember, that's palette knife. So is this. So it's a little bit of texture. If you feel like you need to thin it up some or work with your paintbrush to come in there and um, put a little bit of highlight on the vine, you can with some yellow ochre. And most of our, our highlight feels like it's coming from top left. So. I want to put a little bit of highlight with some yellow ochre on the left side of my vine. Just a little bit. Not much. Okay. I 
that's all we're gonna do. If I wanted to touch in more, honestly, right now, I would come up in this background, adding some white and some yellow tones up here, and maybe on this side. Do what? Yellow ochre? Yeah, yeah, some of the yellow ochre, like I did down here, it just feels like it's too stark. And I wanna add a little bit more color.